Ms. Legalista here, aka Attorney Sheila, bringing you one of the more interesting articles that I have come across recently. We have a Black woman who, I guess, is in the business world, in the technology world, found that when she created a fake white male assistant, that she got further ahead. Okay, so is this fraud? Would you do this? What do you think? Yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining. I want to head over to this article. I'm telling you, I was a little caught off guard by this one. I can't even remember how I found it. I think I was on Blavity and then I was looking for some other stuff. You know how you go down the rabbit hole? Well, I went down the rabbit hole, came back up with a little nugget of something in my mouth. How about that? Let me jump over to this. All right. So there you have it. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about this and see if we can break this down. My phone, of course, is going off as usual. Okay. I have a fake personal assistant. It started almost by accident, but for 10 years has made people take me more seriously. What do you think? Do you think, I mean, she looks like a fairly attractive woman. She looks a little on the younger side, but she looks very presentable. She looks very professional. And this just came out three days ago. So it's not like I'm looking at something from 10 years ago, five years ago, or even one year ago. This is on Business Insider's website, businessinsider.com. I have a fake personal assistant. <laughs> you guys, I don't know what to say, but let me see if I can break some of this down here so that we can talk about it. Okay. She is 34 years old. She works in the tech industry and she has a fake personal assistant named Matt. She is saying that she is being treated differently because of that. <laughs> All right. He does not exist. He is fake, but let's see what some of his responsibilities are because it sounds like he is more public facing than she is. And if people are meeting him first, speaking with him first via email, then I don't know. Apparently he's leaving some sort of impression. She says his name is Matt. He answers emails for me. He negotiates rates, schedules meetings, and rejects offers that aren't up to par. He also doesn't exist. So it's not like people are seeing him in person. They are not. I doubt that there's, you know, a team page on her website that says, Hey, here's our, te our team. Here's a picture of me. Here's a picture of Matt. I don't think she went that far. That really would sort of venture a little bit more into, you know, creating a whole fake persona there. But we all know that virtual assistants are a thing, right? People go online, they hire virtual assistants. But in those cases, the virtual assistants are actually real, right? Well, think about the chat bots that pop up, those little virtual assistants at the bottom of people's websites that say, hi, how may I help you? Can I help you find something? Did you find what you were looking for? Do you have any questions that I can answer for you? Most of us assume, we sort of know now that those are not real that those are really a software program that's running in the background that's designed to ask us questions. And we also know that a lot of people hire virtual assistants now, people who aren't really employees of the company, but usually have a contract with the company to perform certain services. Well, in this case though, Matt doesn't fit into either one of those really well. He's not a real person who's been hired as a virtual assistant, but he's not really a chat bot either. So he's somewhere in the middle of both of those. So if we're thinking this one, the virtual assistant's not really fraudulent, the chat bot, we pretty much have an idea that that's not real either, that maybe this mix of the two then might be okay. Well, I don't know. It sort of depends on what else she's doing with Matt. <laughs> but let's take a look. She said um, it happened by accident. She had a separate email account um, for people to contact her with opportunities. So 
she got an email from someone who assumed that Matt was this third person, you know, that maybe Matt was maybe her PR person or her manager or something like that, or just the assistant, the virtual assistant, whoever. And so she just sort of went with it. You know, why correct them? And think about it. There are plenty of solopreneurs who are single member LLCs or they're operating as a sole proprietorship and they have their own personal email account. And then maybe they have one that's hello at mygreatcompany.com. Somebody answers that. Or a lot of small companies now will have something that says admin or assistant at mygreatcompany.com. So this is a thing and this has been a thing for a while. <laughs> she says she works in the tech world. And a lot of times when she walks into the room, she's the only black woman in the room. But now she has Matt who's with her, although Matt's not really with her per se. Having Matt on her side, here's a quote, having Matt on, on my side, a person who could be a white man made me feel more confident. Think about that comment, that statement, made her feel more confident because she had the white guy with her. Now, what does that say about going into these spaces as a black woman when you don't have the white male counterpart at your side, even if he is fake? You can understand how some black women might be like, okay, I'm not feeling like I fit in. I'm not feeling like any level of comfort here. Whereas one who walks in feeling confident might present better, right? Might share better, might connect with people better, might be able to build better and more professional relationships because of that increased confidence that she has. So I'm not saying it's a good or bad thing. I'm just saying, hmm, listen to what she said. She said it made her feel more confident. Her words, not mine. One of the other things she said was it, you know, this sort of idea of talking through a man's voice, it gave her more confidence to say things that she wouldn't ordinarily say, or she might not feel comfortable saying. It was sort of like, you know, all of a sudden I get to act the man role. It's a very interesting sort of concept, what she is talking about. I don't know. For women who are watching this video, let me know in the comments if this is something you've ever thought about doing or if this is something you have done. Do you feel like having a male assistant or a male counterpart has lifted your company up or has made you feel more confident or has opened doors for you that you feel like would have been, you know, maybe a little bit more difficult to open had that male counterpart not been there with you is definitely something to think about. Now, just in general, sometimes people will think more of you because you have an assistant. The moment you can say, oh, well, have your assistant call my assistant. Like all of a sudden you're like, yeah, that was me. I got to say that. And you feel like you've sort of come up in the world, right? Because you have an assistant and you can actually say that. I've said that jokingly to other people when I didn't have an intern working with me on occasions. A lot of times I have. They'll say, oh, yeah. They'll say, oh, have your assistant call me. I'll say, yeah, I'll do that. And we're just sort of joking with each other because we know that we are the everything, right? One of the things that she said in this article was she felt like people offered her more money, paid her better because she had Matt. She said they treated her more as a force to be reckoned with. Now think about that. Doesn't that play into the whole, I don't know, men make more money than women or better yet, women don't ask for what they're really worth or have undervalued their worth. I mean, there are just lots of questions about what is going on with this scenario. Now, as I'm talking about this, I'm not necessarily putting what she's doing down or saying some other group is right or wrong. I'm just saying these are very interesting things to think about because she went this route and it raises a lot of questions about our society, how we value people, how we value people's work, how we build our own self-confidence, how we build it when we have other people around us and the kind of other people. It says 
something about who we have to have around us to help lift us up. Now, I'm not saying that we all have to go out and find a white male partner to lift us up. What I'm saying is we have to find that partner, whoever that partner is for us. In her situation, I think, because she was mostly in this sort of tech white male dominated space, that the mat that she found and the way she put Matt out there helped her. In another space, it might be an entirely different assistant that you need. Now, things didn't always look great here. Like the sun wasn't always sunny on this. She actually says in the article, creating Matt felt like cracking a code, but it didn't always feel good. I had to figure out how to make people take me more professionally but it was by using a fictitious white man as a go-between. I try to remind myself that to change the rules of the game, you have to get yourself into the room first. Matt helped me get into the rooms. So that's the thing. If you can get into the rooms, then you can start to prove yourself. You can start to show the value that you're bringing. But if you can't even get into the room, then how are you going to show it? How are you going to show that value? How are you going to show what you're bringing to the table? So I could see how that is sort of, oh, you know, do I really have to do this? Is this what it's going to take? Well, sometimes, yeah, that's what it's going to take. It's going to take doing a little bit extra. Now, you're probably wondering about what if someone called and wanted to speak to Matt or wanted to meet with Matt <laughs> or wanted to send Matt you know, contracts or something and was expecting to see Matt's comments back on that. How did that work? Because at that point, you really are sort of perpetrating a fraud. Like Mac doesn't exist. You know, Matt doesn't exist. Are you using Matt in a way that's deceptive to other people? Yeah, there's definitely a bit of a fraud and deception going on. Let's just be honest. There is. There is. She said in the article that luckily someone only asked to speak to Matt on the phone once. I asked one of my brothers to get on the phone and pretend to be Matt, <laughs> which he did. I think people don't usually ask to speak to him because I have a deck of all of my offerings that Matt would send out. So all their questions are already answered. But so in her case, she really didn't run into a whole lot of issues there. But this article just brings up a lot of questions, you guys. It, you know, had to be interesting to her to even have this conversation about, hey, yeah, I got a mat out there. It's my mat. He's doing my thing or whatever. <laughs> so what does this all say? You know, uh, it's very interesting when we start to talk about the things that we have to do to get into the room or to be successful and whether or not those things cross lines. And when is it acceptable to cross a line. Was it in this case? I don't know. You know, uh, did she go too far? I don't know. It would depend on some of the things that Matt had possibly said in some of the email conversations. I don't know. But it does provide um, an opportunity to sort of ask yourself, how far would you go to get a job, to get into meetings and rooms where other people are, to help you maybe get a higher payment for a project? Like, what would you do? What kind of things outside of the box and possibly deceptive would you do to get that job? All right. So I know I don't have any answers here. I don't have any answers. Uh, this is definitely something to think about and to talk about because there is a question here about the ethics around using a fake person to, I don't know, walk into a room, get into a room, whatever. Is there an, is this an ethical question? Is this fraudulent? Is this deceptive? To some extent, yeah, there is some deception involved. I think that's pretty clear. But now that it's all out there <laughs> on the internet where everybody can see it, her whole thesis around fake Matt is blown. So here are my suggestions for her next steps. So there has been this article that just came out a couple of days ago. My suggestion now is not that she get a fake mat, but that she continue to build on that, not in a deceptive sort of way, but in a way to sort of, um, I don't, I almost want to say sort of tongue in cheek. <laughs> Girl, at this point, you go write a book, you know, 
um, to talk about the experiences and then to also reach out to companies and start to have some direct conversations with them about what your experiences were like. Because in many cases, in many cases, some companies don't realize that there was anything wrong going on on their end. Like they didn't realize that somebody may not have felt comfortable but because of the environment and not necessarily because the company had did anything wrong, you know, but just a feeling sometimes. Remember, she said she had more self-confidence. She didn't say, well, you know, that company had done this and that in the past. That's not what she said. She said, I had more self-confidence. So there are some lessons to be learned here about how we lift ourselves up, what we choose to help on that pathway up, what works for some people, you know, doesn't work for other people. Like I said before, I'm not run, I'm not telling everyone to run out and get themselves a white virtual assistant named Matt or Ben or whatever. But it is an interesting concept to think about in terms of what we need to bring our best selves forward and how we can do that in a way <laughs> that doesn't uh, probably bring up some questions about what we're doing. But this was definitely something interesting to talk about. She did what she felt like she had to do. You know, she did what she felt like she had to do. Let me know in the comments what you think. Is this something you approve of or not? Would you do this yourself? Have you ever done this? If so, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Peace.